hi everyone in this video you are going to see the timing properties of multiplexer and later we are going to see i will write here what are the different things you are going to learn in this video one is timing properties timing properties of mux based master slave register master master slave register so for this one hold time hold time parameter is equal to 0 and propagation delay for the same propagation delay is equal to inverter delay plus propagation delay for the transmission of data inverter delay plus propagation delay of the transmission of the data and the setup time is equal to three times the inverter propagation delay plus propagation delay of transmission data to be transmitted so these are the setup time hold time and propagation delays of your master slave register so later we are going to see the reduced clock load master slave register reduced clock load master slave register continued with respect to the reverse conduction possibility uh, we are going to see reduced clock load master slave master slave register later we are going to see non ideal clock signal non ideal clock signal and avoiding clock overlap avoiding clock overlap and later we are going to see the circuit to generate two phase non overlapping clock two phase non overlapping clock see now let us see the first one which is a reduced clock load register with master slave so reduced clock load master slave register master slave register see the input data d is applied to the input of the transmission gate i told you already the internal architecture of the multiplexers and everything is going to be constructed with the help of nmos and pmos transistors which is nothing but here we have used a transmission gate which has a better control and logic level swing over the normal nmos and pmos that's why every transistor is simply replaced by a or every logic circuit is simply implemented in terms of transmission gate so here we have a transmission gate one followed by a cmos inverter which is connected back to back see the output of this one is connected at the input of another cmos inverter again the same is fed back to the input of another inverter so this is the way where we that uh, we can say this particular device is nothing but a memory we can say this particular logic circuit simply which is connected in a circular fashion is nothing but a memory cell suppose a, uh, one is here one passes through this inverter and converted into zero and again zero is applied to the input of this inverter converted into one so one zero one zero one zero until and unless we have an other other way other input or we can say we can also take the output from the transmission gate t1 and t2 the t1 and t2 assume to be off so that the memory will be there only and if they are on then the memory data data in that memory can be transferred to the other devices here also it is the another memory location to save the same and same operation it is also having okay so it is nothing but reduced clock load master slave register where the input is just the memory is nowhere related to the clock 
just the clock is used to control the transmission gates okay whereas there is no direct or indirect connection between clock and memory okay that's why the load on the clock signal can be directly reduced okay so that's why it is reduced the clock load master slave register the same can also be just explained when we are having in the reverse operation let us assume a situation where the input is applied like vdd here and zero here nothing but it is off completely off because pmos transistor is applied with vdd and nmos transistor is applied with a zero so the transistor t1 is completely off and what about the transistor t2 t2 should be on because it is zero it is vdd so this particular transmission gate is in on state and the current flows in the reverse direction as shown in the arrow okay this is the way just normally how we are taking and in the suppose in the reverse operation if the first transmission gate is in on state and the second transmission gate is in off state then that current should be transmitted in the reverse direction in the forward direction we can say <coughs> okay so now coming to this non ideal clock signal non ideal clock signal non ideal clock signal and ideal clock signal what is the difference between clock signal which is ideal and which is non ideal so ideal clock signal is having an abrupt changes from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 but whereas practical clock signals which are non identical which they are having slight difference at particularly rise time and fall time so they exhibit some rise time and fall time immediately they will not go to 1 or they will, immediately they will not come to uh, 0 because some changes or occurrence of resistance and capacitance in the generation of the clock signal so we are having the non ideal clock signal which is applied to the same type of logic circuit then the operation of this particular circuit is going to be changed and it will not as in the case discussed in the previous case because there is no sudden changes or abrupt changes occur in the generation of the clock so you may have an operational change at this particular situation here and here you will also see see here there is a gap between the occurrence of logic high and logic zero because of this gap the circuit won't work properly see clock if you are taking clock which is in the true form 0 to 1 transition occurs at this particular point but 1 to 0 transition occurs at this particular point so there exists some time gap between clock and clock power okay so that's why because of this but what we generally think whenever we are having the 0 to 1 transition in the clock clock power you should also have 1 to 0 transition at the same instant but it is having some delay this is what the non-identical clock signals when we are having that type of clock signals and apply to this devices the operation will be will not be a required one okay the same can be avoided avoiding clock overlap avoiding clock overlap so in the previous case we i have explained you about the clock changes from true form to a complemented form and this can be eliminating the clock signal completely and providing two phase signals as phase one and phase two apply to three apply to the nmos transistors previously we have taken a pass transistor <coughs> nothing but a transmission gate now we are taking nmos transistor as a pass transistor and the same memory cell is also taken here followed by another memory cell so if you see the schematic diagram uh, which we have used the phase uh, two phase non overlapping clocks so here this is the phase one this is phase two where where the logic high occurs for the phase one at that situation output here it is zero and here it is zero but the phase two is having one that means we are taking the disadvantage of the clock so that we are avoiding completely the clock signal in the uh, implementing the circuits and we are taking a different signal where they are not meeting together at any point of instant okay so in such a way we are selecting the signals they should not meet each other like this 
So in order to generate this particular clock signal, so it is a circuit to generate two phase non overlapping clock. It is a two phase non overlapping clock. So this is the circuit which is used to generate a two phase non overlapping clock signal. See here we are taking an inverter here we are taking a buffer here and the output the same clock is appeared here and whereas it is a complemented form which is appeared at the input of the second NOR gate. So later we have already known we have already known that it is nothing but a latch which is just a back to back connected fashion of the NOR latch you can say it is NOR latch NOR latch which are connected in general or conventional way. So now coming to the overpowering the feedback loop overpowering the feedback loop which is nothing but having cross coupled pairs. See NOR based set and reset just now I have to given you this is the NOR based latch. So NOR based latch with the set and reset inputs. So we know set and reset and how the outputs are going to be. Okay, so when both are zeros, output is same as the previous state. When one it is zero, then Q is equal to one, set equal to one. So set we are going to set the output to one, which is a complement of other case. So it is zero, and here it is reset is equal to one. So output is going to be resetted, reset by zero. Okay, so the same is just uh, flip flop is represented in terms of ESR flip flop. Or we can say SR latch because we are taking everywhere we are latch. Okay, so it is an SR latch. SR latch with two inputs S and R and outputs Q and Q bar. So along with it, we are with this we are also having additional or added clock signal. Added clock signal. This clock signal is again generated by using um, the same set and reset pins with enable input with enable input the same just is going to be represented in terms of master circuit technology and storage mechanisms we are having something like a static and dynamic storage mechanism the data can be stored in a memory location that may be either static or dynamic so in the static we have, don't have any other components uh, simply for inverters followed by a uh, transmission gate or a pass transistor. But whereas if you go to the dynamic, a clock signal should be there as well as um, capacitor is also there which is used to charge and discharge simultaneously, gradually, slowly. Okay, it will not make the circuit to change immediately from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. So the data can be stored slowly suppose if the transmission gate this transmission gate is on then the d can be slowly transferred to the cc so that the c can be having the maximum voltage wherever the d has now during reverse operation this particular transmission gate comes into on state and it is delivering the it will deliver the power to the sources so this is the way how the static and dynamic static means no change no change constant Dynamic means changing, so capacitor is used and the output clock is also preferred. Now, uh, you can say it is nothing but insensitive insensitive to clock overlap. Insensitive to clock overlap so whatever the clock signal that has been overlapped in the previous case we have seen irrespective of that if you are having any dynamic clock dynamic uh, signal that where the capacitor is connected and the capacitor is charged through this particular uh, path when the both m2 and m4 are on and similarly when m6 and m8 are on we can say the capacity is charged to this so zero overlap is not there here 
overlap is there whatever the first stage is having followed by the second stage here up to this first stage okay so these are the different uh, logics and latches uh, registers we are going to see all these how we are going to implement with respect to cmos technology and um, we have implemented so many logical circuits different uh, gates and two input three input def several number of gates are uh, have been implemented and uh, using cmos circuitry later we have drawn the stick and layout diagrams as well okay so we have seen multiple things like uh, basic electrical characteristics or circuit concepts we have seen stick diagrams we have seen layout diagrams and uh, scaling factors we have seen uh, later ideas versus vds derivations we have seen and um, analog ic designs also we have seen all the parts and advanced technologies also we came to know in the vlsr technology okay so all these concepts are related to very large scale integrated uh, designs vlsi very large scale integration uh, for the btech 3 to semester thank you thank you all